Bauer Becking is one of the world's top yachtsmen. The 42-year-old has been given charge of a multi-million pound budget by a Spanish telephone company. The aim? To win the coveted Volvo Ocean Race, formerly the Whitbread. If he wins, he'll find it easy to raise money for other great adventures. He cannot afford to lose. With him go nine men, men who will suffer doubts and fears and eventually become the center of a seaborne tragedy. On shore, their technical manager, Fred Barrett, will face months of frustration. Now, I'm going to say something fairly contentious here. There's also the Ellen MacArthur factor. Glenn is the boss. He's the CEO of the event, the man two giant sister companies have entrusted with millions of pounds. He has a brief to enhance their image as innovative and pioneering multinationals. Who cries away around the world and breaks the world record by three days. Start. Glenn is quiet and tough. So we just need to be able to do that this week and restart. No. No. So we can't sail this weekend, is that what you're saying? Or? Glenn, a three times world champion, will be faced with life and death situations which will test him to the limit. So I'm with the Coast Guard. This is uh, Volvo Ocean Race headquarters. My name's Glenn Burke. I'm the chief executive. Your mate is there standing in front of you and he, then bum is there and you have to stick the big needle in there to give injection. Timo is a Finn. He's the race medical coordinator. Timo will be called upon many times and not just on the water. Well, there's the dogs now, but the lemons working with it as well. So, but they're not, none of them is properly educated, they're not listening. You know, there's a fracture in the leg and they, luckily they heard what I told them. Maya and Freddy met during the last Volvo Ocean race. Maya, this time, must wait and worry. It's not going to be many hours left before they leave, and they'll be gone. Their tearful goodbyes are a prelude to a dramatic decision. We got all kinds of shit in here, I'll tell you folks. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff. Kimo stays on shore and knows the ropes. Keep working. He's part of the Pirates of the Caribbean race entry. That's what the Volvo Ocean Race is, just moving stuff. They are rich. Ah, oh, that sucks. Let's just change it. Let's just get in there. So we just had a huge hit list. We flew guys in. We had about 20 guys strong. And then there's Grant Warrington and his team on Premier Challenge. They are not rich. Do you want extra coffee and stuff like that? There are winners and there are losers. Yes, sir, I got told by Alan Adler that um, unfortunately that, that, that I wasn't going to be needed to do the, the rest of the race. And I was pretty disappointed about that. The race is about to begin. This is a unique event. Unlike an Olympics that fills a city for a month and disappears, a car race or a football match that lasts a few hours, the race lasts for eight months. It circles the globe and some of the athletes may not come back. Our six programs are a startling revelation of the stories behind the story, of the drama and distress, the conflict and the danger. This traveling circus has gathered in San Cenzo in Spain. The race is just a few days away. Already, the thoughts of Timo, the medical coordinator, are focused on what might happen. The skin is very close to human skin. And pictures as they're cheap, it's easy to get them. It's got a bit of meat as well, so you can practice the intramuscular injections as well. Very, very versatile. You've got to be prepared for everything. Oh, that's not a problem. You know. They normally make a bit of noise, but you know we do tune that out and focus on the job at hand. It's a bit of fun, actually. You know, it's something we look forward to. Justin is on Pirates of the Caribbean. I love doing it. I'll do it wherever I can. You know you're in because if you let go of that, the blood starts coming out. So I've got my finger stopping it, and then you cap it off like that. So we now have got a Venflon in with a bit of blood. Always looks good. It Don't looks remarkably like Vino Tinto, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Vino Tinto. When you first time when you do it, it's probably quite a scary thing to do. 
your mate is there standing in front of you and he, their bum is there and you have to stick a big needle in there to give injection. That's why we're doing this. We we'll give them yet another chance to practice it. Sponsored by the giant Disney Corporation, the Pirates of the Caribbean is part of a worldwide marketing campaign for their second movie of the same name. No expense is spared. Although their campaign was late to start, they're catching up fast. Skipper is Paul Kayard, a pirate look-alike. He's won the race before. We had good speed. Last night, we doing average 21 knots for five hours. We did a lot of sail testing on the way. Down, Justin. And uh, we main thing is we got this new mast in the boat. Their latest tune-up may have gone well, but there's plenty of work for chemo as a result. The full pit my ride, and then their list, how the list, the pit my ride was, all the sailors went and did the 2,000 miler, and they said, here's how we want to change everything, and this is basically pit my ride. But really, no, very serious. I mean, stuff to make it better for going around the world. We flew guys in, we had the uh, three guys from America. So we had about 20 guys strong. And basically, the code name was Pit My Ride. We like to give everything a little name, just to have a little fun with it. Is Paul happy? Paul's not happy till he wins. That's when Paul's happy. As the full weight of their resources is poured into getting their boat ready, there's no thought of Grant Warrington's Australian entry, ING Real Estate. Just arriving in Belgium, there's no guarantee she'll even make the start. Funds are short. It's syndicate manager Bindi yes. Lockhart's job to sort that out. OK, cool. I'll do that. That's lovely, Benno. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, so. my God. Well, basically, this guy knows ING Real Estate really well. He's mates with the chairman that we originally did the deal with. And he is just saying, look, I'm sure we can try and do something. Can you get him to ring me? Well, I just so want this to happen that I can't help but just feel like, oh my god, oh my god, we might actually get it done. You know, there's all these different measurements to make sure the boats are as equal or fit into the rule. How tough is that? Uh, well, you just got to abide by it, you know, you just got to do, you know, the measure says it either measures or doesn't measure, and you got to fix it until he's happy. Basically, the measure is God. The pressure seems to be getting to some. The sailing world is one of paranoia. If you can get an edge in performance, keep it quiet. Bauer Becking's crew are about to install a new set of keel rams. These move the keel from one side of the boat to the other. After sailing halfway around the world, trouble-free with the old ones, this is a bold decision just days before the race. Some, uh, some stainless steel rams that, that are quite heavy. They're around 120 kilos each, these guys. They've got a bit of oil, got a bit of oil in them, so they're slightly heavier. Um, we'll just get them in a bag. They know what's going on, but no point showing them everything. Could also be a dead body from training yesterday. So the new titanium rams are installed under a cloak of secrecy. For Movistar's technical manager, Fred Barrett, this moment will come back to haunt him. For event boss Glenn and his team, the media, but especially television, is the only effective way to achieve the exposure needed to satisfy sponsors. After the first hour of watching that kind of footage, for the lay person, it becomes fairly similar, fairly the same. We're not interested in the technical detail. We're interested in what's happening in their heart and in their head. And if they can articulate that, then they'll create an audience for us. Now, I'm going to say something fairly contentious here. There's also the Ellen MacArthur factor. In the subconscious of the, of the people that watch Ellen MacArthur go around the world, they see a 28-year-old, fresh-faced girl who cries away around the world and breaks the world record by three days. They must question how hard is it really how tough is it to get around the world? If this young, sweet-looking, small, 28-year-old girl breaks the world record. So how are we going to portray you guys as the hard asses, the champions and the, and the guys driving and doing a better job than that and really pushing these boats? How are we going to 
describe that as a story which is interesting to people if they already think it's a little bit soft. Vomiting bile for, for 48 hours is interesting to the layman. That's the stuff that makes this race. If we don't have it, we're dead, we're gone. As the crews practice emergency survival drills, that message takes on new meaning. The only woman in the race is Adrienne Cahalan. I think the reality of it, though, is, yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a pool, we don't have wind and waves, it's already hard, so, you know. Yeah, it's never something that you like to think about, you actually put it out of your mind, so and it's not much fun when there's four people packed in a raft. Yeah, no, you never want to have it. Yeah. <laughs> you have a casualty. You haven't been a casualty, have you? You're not the skipper, are you? No. Which is the skipper? Sorry. You're the casualty. Bauer Becking has done this many times in practice. He and his crew know that these drills are essential. None of his team expect to experience the real thing. It's okay in the pool, but what I said, hopefully never in the real life. It's on the motorway near Vigo, a long way from a sailing environment, that Timo, the race medical coordinator, is called into action once more. Yeah, the ambulance is on its way and they've got a doctor in the ambulance. The only thing is that people were trying to move him, which they shouldn't do. Well, there's the doctor now, but Elena is working with it as well. So, but they're not, none of them is properly educated, they're not listening, you know, there's a fracture in the leg and they, luckily they heard what I told them. Poor chap, you know, the pain that he must be going through. He stayed conscious, sir. Yeah, because he had to. Ladies and gentlemen, well, this is probably the best village that's ever been created for the Volvo Ocean Race. The biggest venue ever, purpose built, great facilities, a boat in the race representing this region and this nation. I mean, for, for me, it's been three and a half years of grind. And I think it's probably better than I expected. The boats are more demanding and vibrant and quicker than I expected. So it's as impressive as I wanted it to be, or I dreamt it might be. And uh, now we've just got to continue this for another eight months. Grant Warrington and his Australian team have arrived, but they face a race against time to be ready. So what are you going to do? Uh, we're we'll lifting, we'll lift the, lift the whole boat out of the cradle, yeah. uh, take the keel out of the boat, yeah. take the fin off the bowl, yeah. um, then saw cut the chainsaw under yeah. the plate, 30 mil, pop the bowl back on, yeah. put it back in the boat. We'll give them a certificate if they comply with the rules. If they don't comply with the rules, they won't get a certificate. So at that stage, it's then up to the race committee to decide as in how they want to proceed with that. <laughs> how much is that way? <laughs> Just about to find out. Never. Come here, turtle. Uh, you can see all these other guys worrying about uh, the smallest details. Uh, we've got to worry, to worry about putting a keel and a mast in the boat, so fairly fundamental issues. But, uh, yeah, look, uh, for, we obviously know we're starting well behind the eight ball, uh, you know, initially, and the first leg's really just going to be sort of feeling our way and, uh, you know, getting to know the boat. I've spent uh, only a couple of days sailing the boat, and most of the other guys, or some of the other guys, haven't sailed it at all. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough, the first leg. Swede Freddy Luth is about to take part in his second Volvo Ocean race. A late recruit for the Pirates of the Caribbean team, along with his wife Maya, they're responsible for the food on board. Kitchen paper, we're lining up one, two, all the way around. 26 days, 
It's all numbered, yes. And it's two, two days worth of food in one bag, yeah? So we got 13 bags on board. It's not going to be many hours left before they leave. And they'll be gone up to, well, everything, I guess, from 20 days to 26 days before we see them in Africa. Tomorrow we're going racing. So it's very exciting for, I know, all of us on board, and I hope for all of you. I know it's emotional also, um, but we have a great group of guys on the boat, 10 guys who know a lot about what they're doing. And um, I think we're going to handle the boat and ourselves in a safe and prudent manner and uh, at the same time get some good results. It's 23.52. Tomorrow will be the start of the Volvo Ocean Race. Grant Warrington and his crew are running out of time. And that will do. Do you want extra coffee and stuff like that? Don't worry, We're just waiting for some more filler to come to do a little couple little touch-ups on the keel. And then we can spray on the final uh, orange paint. Safety's almost finished and the measure is coming back at midnight just to check the cant angle. James' dad is the measurer. He'd rather be in bed. Um, here, your emergency water tanks, your 50 litre emergency water tanks have been used for diesel in the past, and the guys are washing them out right now. I've got absolutely no idea. I've just right. tea. I've... If that is no the idea. case, they need to be, you need new ones, you can't use washed out ones. Not sign this certificate unless I'm absolutely <laughs> happy with this. Forward water tight hatch, no handle on it. No handle on it. You can't open it from if you're on the inside. Look, this is a safe this is a safety ship. Yeah, no, Simple, straightforward. Oh, yeah. But it needs to be a lot bigger than that. That's all the way, right? 100 mil. 100 mil. No, I said as it was before. You said 100 mil. I said it as it was before. Just picking the letters up. Where does the squares it say that in the book? Has to be highly visible. No, look, don't f around. Well. Look, do you want a certificate or what? Just f do it, all right? When you turn the handle on, the, on one side, it locks it. On the other side, the handle just spins. I'll have to have a look. I don't know. I haven't got an answer. Like, you know, I don't know. The spa bond may have... I don't know. Some of the bits and bobs are a little bit... Um, yeah, well, typical of everything that's been done here. That's yeah. what makes me nervous. Yeah. You know, it's the safety issues that I've worked about yeah. It's just 16 hours before the race starts. James is still not happy. The measuring team leave with still more changes to be made. I think there's a philosophical thing that the closer we get to the eight, eight boats of the last race, the more justifiable the race is, the more it is a seven boat race. And as soon as we drop to six boats, just there's a psychological innuendo in the background that says maybe this race isn't quite as powerful as we thought it was. Finally, six hours later, James gives the all clear. You and I sign it, are we? Now they need to get a copy of this certificate to the race committee by last Friday, wasn't it? <laughs> Grant. Okay. Vigo, race day. The first couple of days looks like downwind hard running, which suits these boats perfectly, but it'll be a really good test. Like uh, one of the guys was telling me the other day that they probably do 540 miles in the, in the first day out of here. So six hours, get get settled, get cooking, and then 540, which would be a new 24-hour record. So we're gonna blast out of here. Just good. We love blasting on. These boats blast nicely. A big big session tomorrow to pack up all this palaver, the circus. I've got the giraffes ready. The elephants are packed. 
Just gotta get all the bears to get them now and uh, away we go. We got all kinds of shit in here, I'll tell you folks. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff. It's all just shit. What's in the big box? Huh? The big box? That's the movie star box. <laughs> we don't know what's in there. It could be a child or something for all we know. There's just stuff. It's just stuff. Like the army when they move piles of stuff. One place to another place. That's all it is. That's what the Volvo Ocean Race is. Just moving stuff. I think they're going to have 30, 35, 40 knots of breeze up the bum. They'll be pushing the boat pretty hard, so sort of a little bit of standby, I guess, just in case it all goes to the pool and forget the canaries or something like that. But fingers crossed, I've been going around to all the guys saying, just take it easy, just maintain contact and uh, don't bust the bloody thing, you know. And the guys are pretty psyched up to get going, everyone's ready. You can feel the tension, the wives, everybody's kind of, you know, shoot, this is the day. I think it's the dark boat. <laughs> But is it going to be good for the, if it's be too nice. Much. When it's warm, it gets even warmer, doesn't it? It's light. Yeah, not, not from the inside. But I'm proud of uh, Freddy's Kitchen. He's really done a great job there, hey? He's organized the food for 10 days for 26 days now. Yeah. With different courses every day and breakfast and snacks. And got it all. <laughs> yeah. I'll be happy to see him go because I haven't been home in uh, almost three months and I get to go home for 10 days, so I'm pretty excited about that. I haven't seen my kids, I haven't seen my son, I've seen my son four days in the last three months. There's no books or MP3 players or, or anything like that. It's Nothing really like, like it's all. really like just sailing because we will be just exhausted. It's just, we've been out enough from all the sailing what we've done. And even like, you might be able to relax for an hour or listening to some music, but it's more important to actually get the sleep. Ready to roll. This is a hard moment to say goodbye, so but that's we know that. It's every time the same, doesn't matter which leg you're going on. The, the rules require that they don't do any, take anything on board after 8 o'clock in the morning, so we're just here making sure that you know, we've checked all the sails, making sure that everything is in place as it should be, making sure they don't change anything before they leave the dock. And as soon as they leave the dock, we can have beer. Some people are really superstitious. I'm not. So. <laughs> you can wish me good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. See you in Cape Town. On the day of the race, Glenn learns that two sailors with the Australian boat have chosen not to race. Glenn Berg. Hi, Mark. I've heard all the stuff that you've said about the race, and and uh, you know, oh, I don't, I don't have to divulge. I've heard it in, from many different people on many different occasions. So, you know, if if you've got other aspirations in life, I, I wish you well with those. And... Even the two replacements for Premier Challenge create a problem for Glenn. We're just trying to work out what these two guys need to do to, um, to be compliant. Yeah. I think they've got to sign the crew declaration form. Sign their own complete crew medical crew. And sign if they can sign their own crew medical certificate that they don't and add something about which don't have diabetes. With the rest of the fleet already manoeuvring at the start, Grant finally arrives. Three cheers for Premier Challenge. Hip hip. Right. Hip hip. Right. Hip hip. Right. Nice job, guys. Four, three, two, one. Now. Last out of the harbour, but undaunted, Grant and the fleet head for Cape Town. Hopes and morale are high, but nothing has prepared them for what nature will throw at them during the night. Well, when I heard my US cell phone go off and it's pretty loud, I knew it was them, and before I got to the phone, I knew because it was 6:30, and you know, it was Sunday morning. And I was like, basically, it was just shit. And then I looked at the uh, screen, and it said the Black Pearl. So I knew it wasn't like, hey, we're doing great, <laughs> we're really having fun out here. I knew it wasn't going to be that. It wasn't going to be good news. So I had to go. 
In our next programme, we discover just what happened on that first night at sea.